Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dean bringing you another video for CompTIA exam. But this time I have prepared you 50 questions for CompTIA Security Plus, the newest exam. Right, if you want more questions like these one you're going to see right now, I suggest you check please the link in the description. It will take you to my newest Udemy course, which has around 390 questions and they are separated in six practice exam tests. So I'm sure it will help you learn a little bit the material and pass the exam. Right, let's not waste any more time and start with question number one. Which of the following teams combines both offensive and defensive testing techniques to protect an organization's critical systems? We have red team, yellow, purple, green or blue team. Right answer here would be purple team. A purple team combines both offensive red team and defensive blue team testing techniques to enhance the overall security of an organization's critical systems. The collaboration between the red and blue teams helps identify vulnerabilities red team and strengthen defenses blue team to improve the overall security posture. The purple team approach promotes a more comprehensive and coordinated security testing strategy. Question 2. When implementing automation with Internet of Things devices, which of the following should be considered first to keep the network secure? Z-Wave compatibility, network range, communication protocols or ZigBee configuration? And I'm going to choose communication protocols. This is the most critical consideration. The choice of communication protocols should prioritize those with strong security features. Encryption, authentication and data integrity are essential aspects of secure, of secure communication protocols. Before deploying Internet of Things devices, it's crucial to understand and evaluate the security mechanisms provided by the chosen communication protocols. And here is the explanation of the other answers. Z-Wave is a wireless communication protocol commonly used in home automation. Uh, while network range is a practical consideration, especially for large-scale implementations, it is not directly related to the security of communication. And ZigBee is another wireless communication protocol used in IoT. Like Z-Wave, the security of the ZigBee configuration is essential. It's important to ensure that proper security measures are implemented in the ZigBee network to protect against potential vulnerabilities. Next question. Physical access to the organization's servers in the data center requires entry and exit through multiple access points, a lobby, an access control vestibule, three doors leading to the server floor itself and eventually to a caged area solely for the organization's hardware. Which of the following controls is described in this scenario? We have detective, deterrent, compensating or preventive. And here, of course, the right answer is preventive. The scenario describes preventive controls, which are designed to stop malicious actors from gaining access to the organization's servers. This includes using multiple access points such as lobby, an access control vestibule, and multiple doors leading to the server floor, as well as caging the organization's hardware. Preventive controls are designed to stop malicious actors for, for performing a malicious activity or gaining access to an asset. And these controls can include technical solutions such as authentication and access control systems, physical security solutions such as lock and barrier, locks and barriers, and administrative solutions such as policy enforcement. Question number four. A new security engineer has started hardening systems. One of the hardening techniques the engineer is using involves disabling remote logins to the NAS. Users are now reporting the inability to use SCP to transfer files to the NAS, even though the data is still viewable from the user's PCs. 
Which of the following is the most likely cause of this issue? Remote login was disabled in the network d.conf instead of using the sshd.conf. SSH was turned off instead of modifying the configuration file. Network services are no longer running on the NAS or TFTP was disabled on the local hosts. And the right answer here is SSH was turned off instead of modifying the configuration. Sorry, I didn't choose the right answer, the configuration file. Uh, like we said, the most likely cause of the issue described is that the security engineer turned off the secure shell instead of modifying the configuration file. A secure copy protocol relies on SSH for secure file transfer. If SSH is disabled, SCP will not function properly. By turning off SSH, the engineer might have disabled the ability for users to connect remotely, which includes the ability to use SCP for file transfers. To resolve the issue, the security engineer should enable SSH and adjust the configuration settings as needed, rather than completely disabling the service. Next question. Which of the following is a primary security concern for a setting up a bring your own device program? Buffer overflow, end of life, VM escape, or jailbreaking? Right answer here is jailbreaking. Jailbreaking is a primary security concern for setting up Bring Your Own Device program. Jailbreaking refers to the process of removing software restrictions imposed by the device's operating system, often to allow the installation of unauthorized or third-party applications. This can undermine the device's security mechanisms and expose it to potential vulnerabilities. In a Bring Your Own Device program where employees use their personal devices for work-related activities, the organization needs to ensure the security of corporate data and networks. Jailbreaking can introduce security risks by bypassing the built-in security controls of the device, making it more susceptible to malicious software or unauthorized access. Question number six. A security architect is designing a remote access solution for a business partner. The business partner needs to access one Linux server at the company. The business partner wants to avoid managing a password for authentication and additional software installation. Which of the following should the architect recommend? Soft token, SSH key, smart card or C. S R. Right answer is S S H K. Secure shell keys provide a secure and passwordless way for remote access to a Linux server. Instead of relying on a password, SSH keys use a pair of cryptographic keys, public and private, for authentication. With SSH keys, the business partner can access the Linux server without managing a password, and no additional software installation is required on the client side. The private key remains on the client machine, and the corresponding public key is added to the authorized keys file on the Linux server. This method enhances security and eliminates the need for password management. Question 7. A security administrator is integrating several segments onto a single network. One of the segments, which includes legacy devices, presents a significant amount of risk to the network. Which of the following would allow users to access to the legacy devices without compromising the security of the entire network? NIDS, NAT Gateway, MAC Filtering, IPsec, jump server right answer here is jump server a jump server also known as a jump host or jump box is a secure and controlled intermediary system that allows users to access devices in a less secure network segment such as 
one with legacy devices without directly exposing those devices to the entire network. Users connect to the jump server first and then jump from there to access other devices. The other options, Network Intrusion Detection System is a security tool that monitors network traffic for signs of malicious activity or security policy violations. Many access control filtering involves controlling access to a network by filtering devices based on their MAC addresses. Internet Protocol Security, IPsec is a suite of protocols used to secure IP communications. And NAT Gateway, Network Address Translation Gateway, allows multiple devices on a local network to share a single public IP address. Next question. A security professional wants to enhance the protection of a critical environment that is used to store and manage a company's encryption keys. The selected technology should be tamper-resistant. Which of the following should the security professional implement to achieve the goal? CA, FIM, HSM, DLP. I'm gonna go with HSM. Stands for a hardware security module. Is a tamper-resistant device designed to secure, store and manage cryptographic keys. It provides a dedicated hardware platform for key management functions, offering a higher level of protection compared to software-based solutions. HSMs are designed to resist tampering and unauthorized access. They often include physical security measures such as secure enclosures and tamper evidence seals to protect the sensitive cryptographic material stored within them. The other options, DLP focuses on preventing unauthorized access and disclosure of sensitive data. CA is responsible for you issuing and managing digital certificates in a public key infrastructure. Uh, FIM monitors and detects changes to files and system integrity, ensuring that critical files and configurations remain unchanged. Question 9. Which of the following environment utili utilizes dummy data and is most to be installed locally on a system that allows to be assessed directly and modified easily with each build? Production, development, test, staging. And the right answer here will be development. Let's see, that's the one. In a development environment, software developers work on creating and modifying code. This environment is often set up on individual developers' machines, allowing them to test and debug their code before it moves to higher level environments like test, staging, and eventually production. Dummy data is frequently used in the development phase to simu simulate various scenarios and ensure that the software functions the software functions correctly. Question number 10. A security analyst is concerned about traffic initiated to the dark web from the corporate LAN. Which of the following networks should the analyst monitor? AIS IOC SFTP TOR Right answer here is TOR If a security analyst is concerned about traffic initiated to the dark web from the corporate land, they should monitor the TOR network. TOR stands for the Onion Router, is a privacy-focused network that allows users to access the internet anonymously. It can be used to access the dark web, a part of the internet that is intentionally hidden and often associated with illicit, illicit activities. The other option, Secure File Transfer Protocol, is a secure file transfer protocol and is not directly related to accessing the dark web. Automated Information System generally refers to systems that automate the processing and management of information. Indicators of Compromise typically refers to signs or evidence that a security incident may have occurred. Question 11. A security architect is working on an email solution that will send sensitive data. However, 
funds are not currently available in the budget for building additional infrastructure. Which of the following should the architect choose? PGP, POP, IMAP, IPSEC. Right answer is PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy. Uh, PGP is a data encryption and decryption program that provides cryptographic privacy and authentication for data communication. It can be implemented without significant additional infrastructure and is commonly used to secure email communications. The other options, post office protocol is a protocol used for retrieving emails from a mail server. Internet protocol security is a suit for protocols used to secure internet protocol communications and internet message access protocol is protocol for accessing and managing email messages on a mail server. And that's it for this question. Let's move on. Next one, a worldwide manufacturing company has been experiencing email account compromises. In one incident, a user logged in from the corporate office in France, but then, but then seconds later, the same user account attempted a login from Brazil. Which of the following account policies would best prevent this type of attack? Geofencing. Impossible travel time. Geolocation. Or network location. Uh, I'm gonna go with impossible travel time here. Yep. Basically, this is a security metric that detects anonymous login attempts based on the time and distance between two locations. Impossible travel time can help prevent email account compromises by flagging login attempts that occur within a short time span from locations that are far apart, such as France and Brazil. Impossible travel time can indicate that an attacker has stolen or guessed the user's credentials and is trying to access their email account from another location. Question 13. Which of the following types of controls is a turnstile? Detective, technical, corrective, or physical? And this one would be physical. Turnstile is a physical security control that regulates the entry and exit of people into a facility or an area. It can prevent authorized access, tailgating, by requiring valid credentials or tokens to pass through. Let's go to the next question, question 14. Which of the following best describes configuring devices to lock to a centralized off-site location for possible future reference? DLP, SCAP, archiving, log, aggregation. Right answer here would be log aggregation. Log aggregation involves collecting and centralizing log data from various devices and systems into a single location, often referred to as a log server or a security information and event management systems. The other options, DLP, data loss prevention, focuses on preventing unauthorized access to sensitive data, archiving, typically refers to the process of storing data for long term, security content automation protocol is a set of standards for automating vulnerability management and policy compliance evaluation. Question 15. A backup operator wants to perform a backup to enhance the RTO and RPO in a highly time and storage efficient way that has no impact on production systems. Which of the following backup types should the operator use? Image, snapshot, full or tape? Right, the best option here is snapshot. This is type of backup that captures the state of a system at a point in time. It is highly time and storage efficient because it only record records the changes made to the system since the last backup. 
It also has no impact on production systems because it does not require them to be offline or paused during the backup process. Question 16. An employee's company email is configured with conditional access and requires that MFA is enabled and used. An example of, F, um, of MFA is a phone call and a push notification, an SMS message, a password, an authentication application. And here the right answer would be an authentication application. Uh, basically, this, is, this generates a one-time passwords or QR codes that are time-based and unique to each user and device. It does not rely on network connectivity or SMS delivery, which can be intercepted or delayed. It also does not require the user to respond to a push notification, which can be accidentally approved or ignored. Question 17. A company is required to continue using legacy software to support a critical service. Which of the following best explains a risk of this practice? Unsecure protocols. Weak encryption. Lack of vendor support. Default system configuration. And the right answer here will be lack of vendor support. This means that the vendor may no longer provide security patches, software updates or technical support for the software. And this leaves the software vulnerable to new security threats and vulnerabilities that could be exploited by the attackers. Next one. Which of the following best describes when an organization utilizes a read-to-use application from a cloud provider? SAAS, XAAS, IAAS, PAAS. And I'm gonna go with here with software as a service. Uh, this is a cloud computing service model where the provider hosts and delivers software applications over the internet. Users can access the software through a web browser without needing to install or maintain the application locally. The other options Infrastructure as a service provides virtualized computing resources over the internet such as virtual machines, storage and networks allowing users to build and manage their own infrastructure. Platform as a service provides a platform that allows customers to develop, run and manage applications without dealing with the complexities of infrastructure. And everything as a service is a generic term that encompasses various as a service models including uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, and other services that can be delivered over the internet. Question 19. A security analyst is currently addressing an active cyber incident. The analyst has been able to identify affected devices that are running a malicious application with a unique hash. Which of the following is the next step according to the incident response process? Lessons learned, preparation, recovery, or containment. And here the right answer would be containment. Uh, containment involves isolating and preventing the further spread of the incident to minimize damage. This may involve isolating affected systems, blocking network communications, or taking other measures to limit the impact of the incident. And here are the steps in the incident response process. First one is preparation, establishing an incident response plan and preparing the necessary tools and resources. After that comes identification, detecting and confirming the occurrence of a security incident. Then we have containment. The, uh, the answer, the right answer in this question, isolating and restricting the incident to prevent further damage or spread. After that, we have eradication, removing the cause of the incident, such as malware or vulnerabilities, then recovery, restoring affected systems to normal operation, and then lessons learned, analyzing the incident response process to identify areas for improvement and to learn from the incident. Question. 
20. During a Chief Information Security Officer convention, to discuss security awareness, the attendees are provided with a network connection to use as a resource. As the convention progresses, one of the attendees starts to notice delays in the connection, and the HTTPS site requests are reverting to HTTP. Which of the following best describes what is happening? A SSL TLS downgrade, DNS hijacking to reroute traffic, brute force to the access point, birthday collision on the certificate key. Right answer here would be a SSL TLS downgrade. The situation described where HTTPS site requests are reverting to HTTP and there are delays in the connection is indicative of an SSL TLS downgrade attack. In this type of attack, an adversary tries to force a secure connection to use a less secure version of the SSL TLS protocol, often downgrading from HTTPS to HTTP. This can be accomplished through various means, such as exploiting vulnerabilities or manipulating network traffic. When successful, it exposes the communication to potential eavesdropping and other security risks associated with unencrypted connections. The other options are less re uh, relevant to the described scenario, uh, birthday collision on the certificate key, birthday attacks are a type of cryptographic attack, but they are not directly related to SSL TLS protocol downgrades, we have DNS hijacking to reroute traffic. Uh, this one involves manipulating the DNS resolution process to redirect the traffic. We have brute force to the access point. Brute force attacks involve trying multiple passwords to gain unauthorized access. While they could lead to security issues, they are not specifically related to SSL TLS protocol downgrades. Question 21. Which of the following would be the most effective to contain a rapidly spreading attack that is affecting a large number of organizations? We have machine learning, block list, honeypot, or DNS sinkhole. And the right answer here is DNS sinkhole. A DNS sinkhole involves redirecting malicious traffic to a non-existent or controlled domain, effectively cutting off communication between the compromised systems and the malicious infrastructure. This method can be particularly effective in stopping the spread of malware, disrupting communication with command and control servers, and preventing further infections. It is a proactive approach that doesn't rely on signatures or specific IP addresses, making it versatile against rapidly evolving threats. The other options, machine learning, while machine learning can be valuable for detecting and migrating threats, it might not provide immediate containment in the context of a rapidly spreading attack. Block list is a list of specified IP addresses, URLs uh, or domains to be blocked. Honeypot, a honeypot is a decoy system set up to attract attackers and it may not be the most effective method for rapidly containing, uh, containing an attack. Let's go to question 22. Which of the following environments can be stood up in a short period of time, utilizes either dummy data or actual data, and is used to demonstrate and model system capabilities and functionality for a fixed agreed upon duration of time. Development, test, production, POC. And that will be the right answer, POC. Stands for a proof of concept can be stood up in a short period of time, utilizes either dummy data or actual data, and it's used to demonstrate and model system capabilities and functionality for a fixed agreed upon duration of time. Uh, POC is a typically set up to validate or showcase a specific concept, technology or system before a full scale implementation. It allows stakeholders to assess and feasibility and potential benefits of a proposed solution. The other options, production, 
production environments are the live and operational systems used for actual business operations. Test, test environments are used for testing and quality assurance purposes. Development environments are used for coding, programming and software development. Question 23. A large industrial systems smart generator monitors the system status and sends alerts to third-party maintenance personnel when critical failures occur. While reviewing the network logs, the company security manager notices the generator's IP is sending packets to an internal file server's IP. Which of the following mitigations would be best for the security manager to implement while maintaining alerting capabilities? Segmentation, firewall whitelisting, isolation, or containment? And the right answer here will be segmentation. This is a secure technique that divides a network into smaller subnetworks or segments based on criteria such as function, role, location, etc. Segmentation can help mitigate the risk of unauthorized access or data leakage by isolating different segments from each other and applying different security policies and controls to each segment. Segmentation can help the security manager to implement a mitigation while maintaining alerting capabilities by separating the smart generator from the internal file server and allowing only necessary communication between them. Question 24. Security analysts ha have noticed the network becomes flooded with malicious packets at specific times of the day. Which of the following should the analysts use to investigate this issue? Bandwidth monitors, correlation dashboards, web metadata, system files. Right answer is bandwidth monitors. They help in analyzing network traffic patterns, identifying spikes in data transfer, and pinpointing the specific times when the network experiences increased activity. The other options are less relevant for investigating network flooding. Web metadata typically includes information about web content and it may not be the most direct source for investigating network flooding. System files are generally associated with operating system, Correlation dashboards, while correlation dashboards can help in correlating various security events, they may not be the first choice for investigating the specific times when the network is flooded with malicious packets. Therefore, bandwidth monitoring tools are more suitable for this purpose, that's why it's the right answer. Next question. A company recently experienced a major breach. An investigation concludes that customer credit card data was stolen and exfiltrated through a dedicated business partner connection to a vendor who is not held to the same security control standards. Which of the following is the most likely source of the breach? Side channel, malware, supply chain or cryptographic downgrade? Uh, the right answer here will be supply chain. A supply chain attack involves exploiting vulnerabilities in a company's supply chain, which includes vendors, partners or other entities connected to the organization. The compromised security control standards of the vendor may have allowed attackers to gain unauthorized access to the company's systems and exfiltrate sensitive data. This type of attack emphasizes the importance of ensuring that all entities within the supply chain maintain appropriate security measures to mitigate the risk of breaches. The other options, side channel. Side channel attacks involve exploiting information leaked during the execution of a system. Cryptographic downgrade. These are attacks involve forcing the use of weaker cryptographic algorithms. Malware could be could be involved in a breach, but the scenario emphasizes the involvement of a dedicated business partner connection to a vendor, suggesting a broader supply chain compromise. 
Right, question 26. A security analyst needs to recommend a solution that will allow current Active Directory accounts and groups to be used for access controls on both network and remote access devices. Which of the following should the analyst recommend? Select 2. Takas plus CHAP, Kerberos, OpenID, OAuth, Radius. And the right answer here, we need to choose two actually, the right answers. The first one will be Kerberos and the other one will be Radius. Yep. Kerberos is a network authentication protocol that is commonly used with Active Directory. It supports strong authentication and can be used for both network and remote access devices. RADIUS, which stands for Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service, is a network protocol that supports centralized authentication and authorization. It can integrate with Active Directory and it is commonly used for remote access solutions. The other options are not typically associated with direct integration with Active Directory for access controls. Let's see about Terminal Access Controller, Access Control System Plus. While TACACS, I call it TACAX, <laughs> TACAX Plus is a protocol used for authentication, authorization and accounting. It is not commonly integrated directly with Active Directory. OAuth is an authorization framework commonly used for web-based authentication but is not typically used for direct integration with AD. OpenID is an open standard for authentication, also not uh, used. And we have Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. CHAP is an authentication protocol commonly used in point-to-point -point protocol environments but is not directly associated with Active Directory integration for access controls. Question 27. A desktop support technician recently installed a new document scanning software program on a computer. However, when the end user tried to launch the program, it did not respond. Which of the following is the most likely the cause? The software was not added to the application whitelist. A new firewall rule is needed to access the application. The system was isolated from the network due to infected software or the system was quarantined for missing software updates. Uh, and I'm gonna go with the first answer which is the software was not added to the application whitelist. If the document scanning software program does not respond when launched, the most likely cause is that the software has not been added to the application whitelist. Application whitelists, whitelisting is a security measure that only allows approved applications to run on a system. If the new software is not on the whitelist, the system may prevent it from executing. The other options. A new firewall rule is needed to access the application. Uh, basically, uh, these far firewall rules, they control network communication. And if the issue is with launching the program locally, it is less likely related to a firewall rule. The system was quarantined for missing software updates. While missing software updates can be a security concern, it is not the most likely cause for a specific application not responding. The system was isolated from the network due to infected software. Network isolation due to infected software is a drastic measure and it's less likely to be the cause of a specific application not responding locally on the system. Question 28. An organization would like to remediate the risk associated with its cloud service provider not meeting its advertised 99.999 percent availability metrics. Which of the following should the organization consult for the exact requirements for the cloud provider? SLA, MOU, NDA, BPA. And here the right answer is the first one, service level agreement. Basically, 
SLA is a formal contract that outlines the agreed upon terms and conditions between the service provider and the customer, including details about service levels, performance metrics and remedies in case of service level breaches. The other options are not directly related to the specific requirements and metrics for service availability, business partnership agreement, this term is not commonly used in the context of cloud service agreement, non-disclosure agreement is a legal contract that outlines confidentiality terms between parties, memorandum of understanding is a non-binding agreement that outlines the terms and details of a collaboration or understanding between parties. That's it for this question, let's go to the next one, 29. An enterprise has hired an outside security firm to facilitate penetration testing on its network and applications. The firm has agreed to pay for each vulnerability that is discovered. Which of the following best represents the type of testing that is being used? White box, black box, bug bounty, gray box or red team? And the right answer here will be bug bounty. I'm sure you know that. In a bug bounty program, individuals or security firms are incentivized to find and report security vulnerabilities in a system and they are rewarded based on the severity and impact of the vulnerabilities. The other options, white box, is the white box testing involves having full knowledge of the internal workings and code of the system being tested, red team, Testing is an assessment where a group simulates an attack on a system to identify vulnerabilities. Gray box testing is a combination of white box and black box testing where the tester has partial knowledge of the internal workings of the system. Uh, black box testing involves testing without knowledge of the internal workings of the system. <coughs> Question number 30. An application owner reports suspicious activity on an internal financial application from various internal users within the past 14 days. A security analyst notices the following. Financial transactions were occurred during irregular time frames and outside of business hours by unauthorized users. Internal users in question were changing their passwords frequently during that time period. A jump box that several domain administrator users used to connect to remote devices was recently compromised. The authentication method used in the environment is NTLM. And the question. Which of the following types of attacks is most likely being used to gain unauthorized access? We have pass the hash, replay, directory traversal, or brute force. And this is the right answer, pass the hash. In a pass the hash attack, attackers obtain hash credentials, NTLM hashes, from a compromised system. They use these hashes to authenticate and gain unauthorized access to other systems without the need for the actual password. The irregular financial transactions, frequent password changes and compromise of the jump box are consistent with the characteristics of a pasta hash attack. This attack exploits the weakness of using hashed credentials for authentication, allowing attackers to move laterally within a network laterally within a network. Question 31. While troubleshooting a service disruption on a mission critical server, a technician discovered the user account that was configured to run automated process was disabled because the user's password failed to meet the password complexity requirements. Which of the following would be the best solution to securely prevent future issues? Removing the password complexity requirements for the user account. Implementing a shared account the team can use to run automated processes. Using an administrator account to run the processes and disabling the account when it is not in use. Or configuring a service account to run the processes. 
and that would be the right answer. Configuring a service account to run the processes. Service accounts are specifically designed for running services and automated processes. They can be configured with the necessary permissions and are not subject to password complexity requirements in the same way user accounts are. Next question 32. A company installed several cross-cut shredders as part of increased information security practices targeting data leakage risks. Which of the following will this practice reduce? Credential harvesting, shoulder surfing, information elicitation, dumpster diving. Again, the last answer is the correct one. Dumpster drive, diving, not driving, diving. <laughs> this involves searching through trash or recycling bins for discarded documents containing sensitive information. Crosscut shredders, also known as confetti or particle shredders, shred documents into smaller pieces, making it much more challenging for someone to reconstruct and gather sensitive information from discarded documents. The other options are not directly related to a disposal of physical documents. Shoulder surfing involves someone spying on another person's computer screen or activities. Information elicitation refers to the process of extracting information through conversation or interaction and it is not directly to our uh, question. Credential harvesting involves the unauthorized gathering of login credentials, typically through phishing or other malicious means. Question 33. Which of the following describes a maintenance metric that measures the average time required to troubleshoot and restore failed equipment? RTO, RPO, MTBF, F, MTBF, MTTR. Again, the last choice is the right one. St this MTTR, which stands for Mean Time to Restore, represents the average duration it takes to repair or restore a system, device or equipment after a failure or outage. The other options. Recovery time objective is the targeted duration within which a business processes process within which a business process must be restored after a disruption to avoid unacceptable consequences. Mean time between failures is a measure of the average time elapsed between failures of a system representing the reliability of the system. Recovery point objective is the maximum tolerable period during which data might be lost from an IT service due to, due to a major incident and it defines the point in time to which data must be restored after a disruption. Question 34. When planning to build a virtual environment, an administrator needs to achieve the following. Establish policies in limit who can create new virtual machines. Allocate resources according to actual utilization. Require justification for requests outside of the standard requirements. Create standardized categories based on size and resource requirements. And the question, which of the following is the administrator most likely trying to do? Protect against VM escape. Deploy a platform as a service. Avoid VM sprawl. Implement infrastructure as a service replication. Uh, here I'm gonna go with avoid VM sprawl. The administrator is most likely trying to avoid VM sprawl, which occurs when too many virtual machines are created and managed poorly leading to resource waste and increased security risks. The listed actions can help establish policies, 
resource allocation and categorization to prevent unnecessarily virtual machine creation and ensure proper management. Question 35. During an incident, an EDR system detects an increase in the number of encrypted outbound connections from multiple hosts. A firewall is also reporting an increase in outbound connections that use random high ports. An analyst plans to review the correlated logs to find the source of the incident. Which of the following tools will best assist the analyst? A vulnerability scanner, a SIEM, a NGFW, the Windows Event Viewer. Right answer here with a CM. Security information and event management solutions are designed to collect, aggregate and analyze log data from various sources throughout an organization's IT infrastructure. They enable security analysts to correlate events, detect anomalies, and investigate security incidents by providing a centralized platform for log analy analysis. In the given scenario, the analyst is dealing with an incident involving an increase in encrypted outbound connections and random high port usage. A CM can help in correlating logs from various sources, including the EDR system and firewall to identify patterns, anomalies, and the source of the incident. The other options, a vulnerability scanner, typically used to identify and assess vulnerabilities in system, but not focused on log analysis and for incident investigation. Next generation firewall, it can provide information about network connections, but a CM is better suited for correlating and analyzing logs. And we have the Windows Event Viewer, useful for examining Windows-specific events and logs on individual systems, but may not be sufficient for correlating logs for, from multiple hosts and network devices in a centralized manner. Question 36. The technology department at a large global company is expanding its Wi-Fi network infrastructure at the headquarters building. Which of the following should be closely coordinated between the technology, cybersecurity, and physical security departments? WAP placement, VPN configuration, authentication protocol, or encryption type? And the first one is the correct answer WAP placement. The physical location of WAPs can significantly impact the effectiveness and security of the Wi-Fi network. It involves considerations such as coverage, signal strength, and potential physical security risk. The other options. Authentication protocol. This involves determining the method of user authentication, such as WPA2, WPA3, or other protocols. Encryption type. Similar to authentication, the choice of encryption type. WEP, WPA, WPA2, WPA3 and we have VPN configuration Configura uh, this uh, virtual private network configuration is typically handled by the technology and cybersecurity departments to secure communication over the network especially for remote access and let's go to next question 37 a security administrator needs to add fault tolerance and load balancing to the connection from the file server to the backup storage. Which of the following is the best choice to achieve this objective? Segmentation 802.1.1 Multipathing or Rate And the right answer here will be multipathing. Multipathing involves using multiple physical paths, such as network connections or storage paths, between two devices to provide redundancy and improve performance. Multipathing is a technique that allows a system to use more than one path to access a storage device. 
This can improve performance by distributing the workload across multiple paths and also provide fault tolerance by switching to an alternative path if one path fails. Multipathing can be implemented using software or hardware solutions. Question 38. A security engineer is hardening existing solutions to reduce application vulnerabilities. Which of the following solutions should the engineer implement first? Select two answers. Secure cookies. How to update. Sandboxing. Hardware encryption. Third party updates. Full disk encryption or HTTP headers. Right, first I'm gonna choose auto update and I'm gonna go with sandboxing. Auto update can help keep the app up to date with the latest security fixes and enhancements and reduce the risk of exploitation by attackers who target out outdated all or vulnerable versions of the app. Sandboxings can help isolate the app from the other processes and resources on the system and limit its access and permissions to only what is necessary. Sandboxing can help prevent the app from being affected by or affecting other applications or system components and contain any potential damage in case of a breach. Question 39. A security researcher is tracking an adversary by noting its attacks and techniques based on its capabilities, infrastructure and victims. Which of the following is the researcher most likely using? The MITRE CVE database, the incident response process, the cyber kill chain, or the diamond model of intrusion analysis. And the last one is the right answer. The diamond model of intrusion analysis is a framework used by security researchers and analysts to track an adversary's attacks and techniques based on its capabilities, infrastructure and victims. The model represents the relationship between these elements and helps analyze and understand the various aspects of cyber threats. The other options are related to different aspects of cybersecurity, but are not specifically focused on tracking adversaries and their activities. For example, the cyber kill chain describes the stages of a cyber attack, from the initial reconnaissance to the final objective, but may not provide the same detailed analysis of an adversary's capabilities and infrastructure. Uh, the MITRE CVE database maintains a database of publicly disclosed cybersecurity vulnerabilities but does not specifically track adversaries or their techniques. The incident response process involves a structured approach to addressing and managing a cybersecurity incident but does not specifically focus on tracking an adversary over time. Question 40. A building manager is concerned about people going in and out of the office during non-working hours. Which of the following physical security controls would provide the best solution? Bollards, badges, cameras or locks? And I'm gonna go with badges. There are physical security controls that provide a way to identify and authenticate authorized individuals who need to access a building or a restricted area. Badges can also be used to track the entry and exit times of people and monitor their movements within the premises. Badges can help deter unauthorized access by requiring people to present a valid credential before entering or leaving the office. Badges can also help prevent tailgating, which is when an authorized person follows an authorized person through a door or a gate. Badges can be integrated with other security systems such as logs, alarms, cameras or biometrics to enhance the level of protection. 
Question 41. Which of the following procedures would be performed after the root cause of a security incident has been identified to help avoid future incidents from occurring? Containment Attack framework alignment Walkthroughs or lesson learned And the lessons learned will be the right choice here after the root cause of a security incident has been identified, the procedure that would be performed to help avoid future incidents from occurring is lessons learned. This involves a comprehensive review and analysis of the incident to understand what happened, why it happened, and how similar incidents can be prevented in the future. Lessons learned often involve documenting key findings, identifying areas for improvement, and implementing changes to policies, procedures, or technologies to enhance security measures. Question 42. An audit report indicates multiple suspicious attempts to access company resources were made. These attempts were not detected by the company. Which of the following would be the best solution to implement on the company's network? Proxy server intrusion prevention system, security zones, or jump server. Best thing to implement here will be intrusion prevention system. An IPS is designed to monitor network and or system activities for malicious or unwanted behavior and can take proactive measures to prevent or block such activities in real time. Implementing an IPS helps in detecting and mitigating malicious activities, providing a proactive defense against unauthorized access attempts and other security threats. The other options, proxy server is often used for controlling and monitoring internet access. Jump server is used to securely access and manage devices within a network. Security zones involve segmenting a network into different zones based on security requirements. Question 43. A security analyst is investigating a phishing email that contains a malicious document directed to the company's CEO. Which of the following should the analyst perform to understand the threat and retrieve possible IOCs? Perform a trace route to identify the communication path Run a vulnerability scan against the CEO's computer to find possible vulnerabilities. Use NetStat to check whether communication has been made with a remote host. Or install a sandbox to run the malicious payload in a safe environment. And I'm gonna go with this answer to install a sandbox so you can run the malicious software in a safe environment. Using a sandbox environment allows the analyst to execute the malicious document in an isolated and controlled setting. This helps analyze the behavior of the payload, identify potential threats and retrieve IOCs without affecting the actual system or network. The other options run a vulnerability scan against the CEO's computer. There it is useful for identifying weaknesses in systems, but it's not the primary method for analyzing and understanding the behavior of a specific malicious document. Perform a trace route to identify the communication path. This is used to trace the route that packets take through a network, which may not provide detailed information about the behavior of a malicious software, a malicious document. And use NetStat to check whether communication has been made with a remote host. While NetStat can provide information about active network connection, it may not reveal the full scope of the threat or help analyze the payload in a safe environment. That's why Sandbox is the best choice here. Question 44. As part of the lessons learned phase, the SOC is tasked with building methods to detect if a previous incident is happening again. Which of the following would allow the security analyst to alert the SOC if an event is reoccurring? Implementing rules in the NGFW, 
updating the DLP hash that database, publishing a new CRL with revoked certificates, creating a playbook within the SOIR. SOAR. And I'm gonna go also, this one will be the right answer. Creating a playbook within the security orchestration, automation and response tool would allow the security analyst to detect if an event is reoccurring by triggering automated actions based on the previous incident's characteristics. This can help uh, the SOC to respond quickly and effectively to the incident. Guys, if you want more questions like this one, I suggest you check the link in the description under this video. You will find, uh, it will lead you to my Udemy course where you will find more than 390 questions. I'm sure it will help you to pass the exam, so check it out, guys. We have five more questions for this video. Uh, question 45. Which of the following is most likely to contain ranked and ordered information on the likelihood and potential impact of catastrophic events that may affect business processes and systems while also highlighting the residual risks that need to be managed after mitigating controls have been implemented? Right, a risk, a risk register, a disaster recovery plan, an RTO report, an, an asset value register, a business impact analysis. Which one is the right answer here? It will be the first, a risk register. This is a document or a tool that records and tracks information about the identified risks and their analysis, such as likelihood impact, priority, mitigation strategies, residual risk, etc. It can contain ranked and ordered information on the likelihood and potential impact of catastrophic events that may affect businesses, processes and systems, while also highlighting the residual risks that need to be managed after mitigating controls have been implemented. 46. A software company is analyzing a process that detects software vulnerabilities at the earlier stage possible. The goal is to scan the source looking for unsecured practices and weaknesses before the application is deployed in a runtime environment. Which of the following would best assist the company with this objective? Use fuzzing testing, use a penetration testing OS, Use static code analysis, use a web vulnerability scanner. And the right answer here would be use a static code analysis. Uh, this code, static code analysis, involves examining the source code of an application without executing it. This analysis helps identify potential security vulnerabilities unsecure practices and weaknesses in the code before the application is deployed in a runtime environment. The other options. Use fuzzing testing. Fuzzing is a dynamic testing technique that involves providing random or unexpected inputs to an application to discover vulnerabilities during a runtime. Use a web vulnerability scanner. These scanners are typically used to identify vulnerabilities in a web applications during runtime or when deployed. They may not provide the same level of early detection as static code analysis. And use a penetration testing operating system is generally used for ethical hacking and penetration testing of deployed systems. It is not focused on analyzing source code before deployment. Question 47. A software company adopted the following processes before releasing software to production. Peer review, static code scanning, signing. A considerable number of vulnerabilities are still being detected when code is executed on production. Which of the following security tools can improve vulnerability detection on this environment? Dynamic code analysis tool encrypted code repository, 
endpoint detection and re response solution, or file integrity monitoring for the source code. And here the right answer is dynamic code analysis too. Unlike static code analysis, which examines the source code without executing it, dynamic code analysis tools analyze the application during runtime, simulating how it interacts with its environment. This helps identify vulnerabilities and security issues that may only manifest when the code is actually executed. The other options, Fire Integrity Monitoring for the source code, uh, is designed to detect unauthorized changes to files, but it may not be as effective for identifying vulnerabilities in the code during execution. Encrypted code repository, an encrypted code repository enhances security by protecting the confidentiality of the source code. And endpoint detection and response solution are designed to monitor and respond to security incidents on endpoints. Question 48. Which of the following threat vectors would appear to be the most legitimate when used by a malicious actor to impersonate a company? Phone call, email, text message, instant message. And the right answer, guys, here, of course, would be the email. Email is often considered the threat vector that appears to be the most legitimate when used by a malicious actor to impersonate a company. Email spoofing and phishing attacks are common methods used by attackers to send fraudulent emails that appear to be from a legitimate source such as company or a trusted colleague. These emails may contain convincing logos, language and links that trick recipients into taking malicious actions such as clicking on malicious links or providing sensitive information. While other communication channels like phone calls, instant messages and text messages, they can also be used for impersonation. Emails, they are more frequently used due to their widespread use in business communication and the ease with the, which the attackers can manipulate their appearance. And question 50. Last one. So make sure you subscribe for more videos, guys. And hit the like button, please. An organization discovered a disgruntled employee exfiltrated a large amount of PII data by uploading files. Which of the following controls should the organization consider to mitigate these risks? HIPS, EDR, DLP or firewall? And guys, the right answer here will be DLP. Uh, which stands for Data Loss Prevention, which is a set of tools and processes that aim to prevent unauthorized access use or transfer of sensitive data. DLP can help mitigate the risk of data exfiltration by disgruntled employees or external attackers by monitoring and controlling data flows across endpoints, networks and cloud services. DLP can also detect and block attempts to copy, print, email, upload or download sensitive data based on predefined policies and rules. Guys, that's it. Thank you very much. If you have watched this video till the end, please comment, uh, paste a thumbs up emoji so I will know that you have watched till the end. Thank you for the support. I'll keep uploading more videos for CompTIA exams, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. And like I said, check my description, you'll find my Udemy course. And see you next time. Take care and good luck with your studies.